Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. A number of years ago, I visited uh, my cousin in Canada. Uh, during my visit, she made a siu mai for me and she also made a one tent. Uh, in addition, she also made pot stickers. The amazing thing is that uh, she made all these three different dumplings using one single type of skin. In this video, I would like to show you how to make this skin that you can use for all these three different kinds of dumplings. And the simplicity of this approach is really quite remarkable. In this video, I'm going to use about one cup of all-purpose flour to make about 30 skins. I'm going to show you how I call it an intuitive way to make the dough. So instead of adding a defined amount of water to the dough, I add a little bit at a time. This actually allows me to judge exactly how I want the texture of the skin going to be. So I'm going to show you how to observe uh, to create the kind of uh, dough that you want. The key is that you want the dough to be not too hard or too wet. You want to make sure all the flowers are incorporated into the dough as shown right here. I'm going to make it a touch more wet than what I really want it to be. So the next step is that I'm going to control the texture of the dough by slowly adding a little bit more flour. This will actually gradually dry out the dough to the texture that I want. As you watch me, how I do this is that I gradually adding a little bit more flour, and each time when I add more flour, the dough becomes more dry and solid. And kneading the dough for dumplings is far less critical, say when you are baking bread. Oh, I forgot to mention to you that uh, I use uh, warm water uh, to create the dough. I also do not add any salt or uh, anything else. However, when I bake bread, I always add salt. In this case, it's better for the dough to be rather neutral uh, because the filling will carry the flavor uh, of the dumplings. Uh, I usually knit the dough for about 5 to 7 minutes. And I continue to make adjustments uh, to the texture of the dough uh, by adding more flour. Uh, at the end, you want the dough has a, a smooth texture. And it's always better for the dough to be on the dry side. Uh, I have a stand mixer as well, but most of the time I knead those for the dumplings by hand. It allows me to have much greater control of the texture of the dough. Uh, by now, as you can see, that I clean up almost all the flowers on the surface of the kitchen counter. Uh, before I roll out the dough, uh, I'm going to uh, flour the kitchen counter one more time so that things will not stick. Uh, at this point, you should find the dough actually is pretty elastic. Uh, in addition to rolling it, you should pour it at the same time. Uh, I'm going to uh, roll the dough into a single long uh, rope. Uh, however, sometimes I split the dough in half and roll them into two separate ropes. Next, I'm going to use my dough cutter and cut the dough into about the size of my thumb. Of course, there's no way for me to cut them precisely, but the size is not that critical. Next, I'm going to put the dough back into the mixing bowl and then I put a bit of flour over it. And this will prevent them from uh, sticking to each other. And next, I'm going to get a plastic container and I'm going to sprinkle some flour into the container. I'm going to use this rolling pin that I got it from Dollar Tree for one buck. First of all, I'm going to take each piece of the dough and then I'm going to roll it into a small ball. To do this, I want to make sure I flour the countertop very well. I'm going to press the dough into a small pancake. And next, I'm going to roll it into the skin. Uh, to roll it into a round shape, uh, always turn your skin from time to time. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice, at least for me. Uh, I try to roll them as thin as possible because I like the skin to be thin. Uh, I next dip the skin into that uh, container that contains flowers so I can coat both sides of the skin with flour. And then I transfer them to uh, another container. And next, I'm going to show you how to roll the skin on a pastry mat. 
Uh, if you have a pastry mat, by all means, uh, use it. And in this case, you don't have to worry about the skin uh, stick to the countertop. And with a pastry mat, you don't need much flour to uh, cover the surface. In this case, you just want to make sure uh, that the skin do not stick to the rolling pin. Uh, however, in this case, uh, before you put them uh, into the storage container, uh, make sure you flour both sides really well. Uh, otherwise, uh, they might stick to each other. And when you flour the skin well, they actually could store at least overnight. Uh, so you can always make the skin ahead and to use it for the following day. Uh, the texture of the dough uh, could play an important role how long you would be able to store them. If your dough is wet to start out, they tend to stick together much quicker. If you want to store the skins, uh, you can freeze them, but make sure you freeze them right away. Uh, so in future videos, I'm going to show you how to use this skin uh, to make shumai, wontons, as well as pot stickers. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.